Classified M. It may contain coarse language, sexual references and adult themes. show tonight ahead of the Super Saturday by-elections tonight. The reporter Greg Larson pays a visit to the electorate of Longman in Queensland, everyone. Yeah. That'll be good to see that. Plus, we also have stand-up from a very funny fellow indeed, Mr Tom Cashman. Yeah. Good. How are you guys feeling? Are you guys in a good mood? Yeah. Excellent. Let's talk about how this planet we live on is fucked. It's time for Fucked Planet. Yeah. It's a feel-good segment. Now, this is Fucked Planet, OK? It's a segment how the planet we live in is fucked, not to be confused with Planet Fuck, which is the sci-fi porn film I made in the 80s, OK? <laughs> now, I was young and I needed the money. Uh, obviously, a lot of horrible things happening in the world at the moment. Fires are ravaging Greece. That's awful. In fact, right across the Northern Hemisphere, people are copping a whole lot of heat. The heat wave sweeping across Japan has killed at least 65 people. This week, the country recorded its highest temperature ever, reaching 41.1 degrees in Saitama near Tokyo. A record-breaking dry spell has sparked unusually severe wildfires in Sweden. The blazes are ravaging forests as far north as the Arctic Circle, renowned for its cool summers. Yes, people, the Arctic Circle is on fire! <laughs> the Arctic... The Arctic Circle! <laughs> which, as we just heard, is renowned for its very cool summers. There we go, that's a photo. <laughs> the Arctic... And now, the Arctic Circle is on fire! It's on fire! <laughs> the Arctic Circle is on fire. <laughs> there's people in the UK where it's reaching 33 degrees. This is Britain's hottest summer in 350 years. It's technically their first summer in 350 years, but it still counts. <laughs> How are they coping? Well, drinking, I'm drinking more water and, and, and using ice, which we don't <laughs> use. <laughs> That's tough. That's tough stuff, you guys. I've got some bad news for you, sir. There's no ice left, because the Arctic Circle is on fire! <laughs> That's where we get ice from. I don't know if people know that. But... <laughs> Things are looking pretty bad around here, too. Right now, 50% of Queensland is in drought and has been for up to seven years. 53% of New South Wales is in drought as we experience the driest conditions in more than 110 years. Eastern states' hay supplies are being trucked from as far away as Western Australia and the NT. Yeah, eastern states are trucking in hay from Western Australia, no doubt resulting in a brutal Uber Eats bill. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good for the livestock, and farmers are resorting to some pretty extreme measures. One Victorian farmer has even turned to watermelon as a feed alternative for his beef cattle. He says the hungry beasts were initially sceptical, but eventually ate the fruit, rind and all. Man, that is an awful situation and a delicious combination. Ooh! <laughs> And a fruity, refreshing beef. I like it. <laughs> Unfortunately, not all hungry beasts are so lucky. A farmer in Gunnedah is feeding his cattle a truckload of orange peel. And one farmer is so desperate, he's now feeding his sheep onions. Oh. Man. So that's why it's so gross when I kiss them. Uh, I guess that's... <laughs> that's the reason. It's because of the onions. <laughs> I'm not kissing sheep, everybody. <laughs> I am not kissing and fucking sheep. How many times do I have to say it on television? <laughs> so we're in trouble. Australians need to think about what we're going to do to help the environment, mitigate the effects of climate change and lower our emissions. For more on this, we cross to Chaz from The Chaser talking on Sky News with Carol and Marcus for some reason. Carbon emissions are something which I personally am worried about. Not everyone is. I am. Well, and... you are from the ABC. <laughs> That's right, what you expect. Hey, come on, guys! <laughs> of course people from the ABC are worried about global warming. We're snowflakes. Come on! <laughs> oh. Oh. Luckily, to address all this, the government has come up with the National Energy Guarantee. It's the NEG. It's the NEG. On ABC's The Drum last night, Peter Van Onselen was talking to an energy expert about the NEG, a.k.a. NEGhead. 
And <laughs> PVO asked an important question about the neg with confidence and gravitas. Can you explain the neg to us? Can you explain the neg to us, please? <laughs> Help me out here, man. I used to work at Sky News. They don't even believe in climate change over there. Come on! <laughs> what? <laughs> The next going for three big things. It's about making sure Australia has reliable power, making sure that power is affordable, and it still has to make sure that we meet our emissions targets under the Paris Climate Agreement. The government thinks the NEG rules, some other people think it drools. In fact, according to Fairfax, <laughs> one state official described the NEG as the fifth best option. <laughs> Don't worry, Malcolm Turnbull, that's how people refer to me on Tinder all the time, okay? <laughs> I assume they are negging me. It's fine. <laughs> now, in a couple of weeks, the states and territories are going to get together and decide whether they're actually going to support the policy. Yesterday, the Energy Security Board released its final design report on how the neg is going to work. And it is going to work... Barely. This report projects that our emissions target will be 97% fulfilled before the NEG policy even starts in 2021. So 97% of the work will be done and it just has to do the remaining 3%. Makes sense when you learn the NEG policy was designed by Stephen Bradbury. Go, son! Go, son, get in there! Go, son! Hey, at least it's going to reduce electricity prices. That's good news. When the next starts in three years, it could reduce your yearly power bill by a big fat whopping 50 bucks. <laughs> Which in 2021 will get you half a movie ticket. Fun fact. <laughs> no popcorn or parking. Now, to be fair, the report said in total about 80% of Australians will be saving around $550 a year on their electricity bills over the next decade, but only about $150 of that will actually be thanks to the NEG. Now, this policy will reduce investment in renewable energy, slow down the phasing out of coal-fired power stations, therefore worsening the effects of climate change and prolonging droughts, which is fantastic news for sheep if they like onions. So... <laughs> Good stuff. Now it's time to talk about those by-elections. Elections. <laughs> Guys, come on. <laughs> this is serious. It's politics. Come on. Talking a lot about the electorate of Longman in South East Queensland, uh, which is going to the polls on Saturday. Three main players uh, there are Labor's Susan Lamb, the former MP who resigned in May as part of the dual citizenship debacle. Seen here, finding out that she's British. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible news. And there's Liberal challenger Trevor Ruthenberg, nicknamed Big Trev, and if you think that's one of those ironic nicknames, like Little John, you'd be wrong. He's bloody huge! <laughs> Big Trev. <laughs> We've talked a lot about the major parties in Longman, but here's the thing, people hate them. Minor parties are set to receive a big squeak to them, and because of preferences, together they're likely to determine the ultimate winner. Well, we sent tonight the reporter Greg Larson to Longman to talk to the minor battlers and find out what they're offering the Longman community that the major parties aren't. Longman, the electorate situated to the north of Brisbane and the south of the Sunshine Coast, is both geographically and demographically diverse. It has large retiree communities, high unemployment rates, and is the location of the Woodford Folk Festival. The Super Saturday by-election campaign is currently in full swing, with a record 11 candidates competing to win Longman's heart. Even the Bandito Biker Gang are getting in on the campaigning action. <laughs> but how will the electorate vote? To figure that out, we have Greg Larson. Based on thorough research, this one man embodies all the typical qualities of the average Longman male voter. Mid to late 30s, white, fat, bad arm skin, fat, below average income, shabby clothes, sad, fat. Come on. Greg will meet with three minor party candidates to meet his perfect political match and offer them his beautiful golden first preference. Oh, what the fuck? It's bronze, it's not gold. So who's gonna get my first preference? Welcome to the Longman Bachelor. Politically, I've had my heart broken a lot of times by the major parties. And that's why I was so excited to go on some one-on-one -on -one dates with some of the minor candidates. My first one-on-one -on -one date was with Dr. Jackie. She's a vet, she's an independent candidate, and she took me for a ride along in her <laughs> mobile vet service. The first animal we saw was a young dog. You can take Ezra's temperature. 
Okay, just under the tongue, or <laughs> I thought it would go under the tongue. But you could probably do the tongue. That has to go under the tail. I was, I was wrong. Into the oh, bottom. good Into board. the bottom. Is it's, it? in, it's in the bottom. Is it? Yep. Ugh. Well, oh yes. This is what the major parties have been doing to the good people of Longman for a long time. This is really fun. We went from a young dog to an old dog. And so what are we doing with Josie today? We're doing an old dog check. An old dog check. She was doing an old dog check. Because her joints are seizing up, a bit like Longman. Do you want to just walk her along with the footpath and back for me so I can just watch her moving? And then something crazy happened. Oh, she's found an old shoe. The dog <laughs> spotted an old shoe and it was on. I kept wondering, Where's the other shoe? There's just a loose shoe on the ground. It's Longman under the major parties. One shoe short of a pair. <laughs> when we finished the rounds for the day, she took her dog for a walk and let me come along. She has a really unique style. So who's worse, the dogs you treat every day or those bloody dogs in Canberra? <laughs> I like that she laughed at my funny joke. So I noticed when I was looking at all the, the preference deals and all that kind of thing, one Nation have put you as preference number one. I'm not a fan of One Nation, so I asked Dr Jackie why she's preferencing them first and vice versa. Do you align yourself with One Nation policies in, in any way, do you think? I wouldn't say in all respects, mm. but certainly in the respect that I think that our people deserve mental health care. And then she goes and gives me this complicated, long answer about domestic violence and mental health. And when you see the, 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 the mental health state of some of the folks that live in Longman. She didn't even mention Muslims once. I don't know what to think. Well, well thanks for your time, Dr Jackie. Dr Jackie had given me a lot to think about. But it was time for my next one-on-one. -on -one. For my next date, I met with Blair Varia from the Australian Country Party. We did a 3D printing pen craft afternoon. That somehow ties into her policy for building a 3D printing park in Longman. The idea of 3D park is to bring jobs for Longman residents to Longman. Just say good or bad. OK. Publicly funded healthcare. Good. Adolf Hitler. Bad. One thing that impressed me about Blair was that she didn't like Adolf Hitler. I think that was really cool of her to say. Blair doesn't like the Greens, but I'd accidentally started making a, like a little sculpture of Richard Di Natale. He's a green man, Richard Di Natale. Yeah. I don't think we'll employ you down at 3D Park. You've actually just lost my vote right there. Blair gave me a lot to think about as well. Hitler? Bad. 3D printing pens? Not as bad as Hitler, but they don't work well. <laughs> the final date was with James Noonan, a candidate for the Science Party. And our date took place in a VR playground. Hello, James, how you doing? <laughs> Shake hands. <laughs> oh, shit, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I didn't mean to shoot you there. I'll shake hands with this one. <laughs> All right. Hello, <laughs> James. James, sorry, stop, 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 stop. OK. Now, what? I can't... Oh, shit. The first game we played was called The Plank. It's just a simple game where you have to walk out on a plank above a city skyline in VR. James held his composure and that really impressed me. I've made a huge error. I was also real cool about it. <laughs> the next game we played was Arizona Sunshine. Uh, we're looking to remove the tax exempt status of religious institutions. Religion in Australia gets tax exemption for promoting their own religion. Which, to be fair, when so many people are doing it so tough, it's not going along and it doesn't seem fair. Honestly, this date was easily the most fun, but it was also the most difficult to, you know, ask questions. It's real hard to think of interview questions while there's zombies. Oh, no way! <laughs> At the end of the day, I had a great one-on-one. -on -one. Arizona Sunshine is a joy to play. Four out of five stars. It's thrilling, it's adventurous. And, you know, James was, you know, he was cool too, I guess. So many candidates to think about. Dr Jackie, James, Blair, this old man who restored Mini Coopers. You didn't really see that one, but it was shit. I had to think and walk and walk and think and walk down the beach while a drone flew over me to film me thinking about it. And finally, it was time for the first preference ceremony. Well, it's been an amazing journey, and I've enjoyed my time with each and every one of you. 
but I only have one first preference to give. And my first preference goes to... <laughs> Apollo. <laughs> Come on, he's a hunk with abs. Of course I'm going to vote for him. Oh, oh, good. Yeah, That's good. why I voted for you, man. Oh. And there you have it. Two big, beautiful Queensland boys heading off for a chicken palmer feed. What could be more longman than that? Match made in political heaven. Da end. Another by-election fix. Not only did we send Greg to Longman, tomorrow night we'll bring you another in-depth piece from the Tasmanian electorate of Braddon, courtesy of tonight, the reporter Nino Oyama, everybody. <laughs> and also tomorrow, I will be chatting with a couple of guys from a little band called Franz Freakin' Ferdinand. Both bassist Bob Hardy and lead singer Alex Kapranos will be here on Tonightly, everyone. <laughs> Also, performing live in the studio, the incredible voice of singer-songwriter Odette, ladies and gentlemen. Odette will be here. Odette. It's going to be great. So, Netflix is in hot water at the moment. Apparently, tens of thousands of people have called for the new Netflix series Insatiable to be cancelled, which is a lot of people, given the show is not even due to be released until August the 10th. I mean, tens of thousands of people want Tonightly cancelled, but at least we're on air. <laughs> so, what is this show actually about? The 12-episode series is about a high schooler, played by Debbie Ryan, who gets bullied because of her weight. In the show, her character gets punched in the face and spends the summer with her jaw wired shut. When she comes back, she is thin and seen as conventionally attractive by her peers who once bullied her. Instead of becoming their friends, she seeks revenge on them. Sounds pretty lame. Probably gonna watch it twice. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, here's a quick look at the trailer. My name is Patty. While my classmates were out losing their virginity, I was at home stuffing another hole. Then it hit me. Now what? Where's Patty? Right here. Look! Patty's hot! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to punch her in her bitch face. Wow, she loves eating so much, they have her eating the title of the show. <laughs> I don't really get the issue here. I mean, I love the idea of someone getting revenge on bullies. Isn't that a good message for people? No, Tom. No! Oh! <laughs> oh, my gosh, it's beloved writer and comedian Rosie Waterland, everybody. <laughs> wow. Hi, Rosie. I'm, I'm terribly sorry I didn't see you there. That's OK, Tom. It's not your fault. Nobody ever expects to see a fat woman on television. <laughs> well, yeah, normally everyone on TV is super ripped like I am, so... <laughs> OK. All right. So... <laughs> Gotta ignore the sarcasm there. Why aren't you excited for Insatiable? Aren't you excited to see a fat woman get revenge on bullies? No, Tom, I'm not excited. I'm furious. I'm fat and the furious. <laughs> now, that would be a great show. Shut up, Tom. OK. <laughs> this trailer sucks. It stars a thin actress in a dodgy-looking fat suit. It assumes that you can't be happy if you are fat, and it tells viewers that they need to change physically in order to be confident. This is a terrible message for teen girls. All right, but what do you expect TV executives to do? Greenlight a show where a fat woman is happy with the way she is? That's just unbelievable. All oh, right, like <laughs> believing there's a demogorgon monster in the Upside Down, like in Stranger Things. Exactly, that's believable, and he's thin. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why is this particular show got people so upset? We're just sick of being on screen to be the butt of the joke. Fat people have had a gut full. <laughs> gut. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, champ. I've had enough. So I've made my own insatiable trailer, but this time I'm a fat woman who stays fat and gets revenge on the people who deserve it. Watch. Alright, Rosie Waterland, thanks very Watch. much. Watch! Okay. <laughs> my name is Rosie. I'm a successful writer and comedian. But finding any entertainment that isn't fat-phobic is a nightmare. I started noticing that all the shows and movies I was watching had something in common. Wait. It's weight. How much more of this can I take? And why hasn't the believability of fat suits improved since the 90s? <laughs> then it hit me. Right here. 
but you're still fat. Still fat, still hot. <laughs> it was time to get revenge. Well, a fat suit is a great idea. Wrong. It's always demeaning. Even having a fat suit is fat phobic. But fat suits are funny. <laughs> <laughs> We're not the punchline. This is. <laughs> We shouldn't be teaching teen girls they need to be thin in order to be happy. Why can't you just cast a show with a funny fat actress? Because Melissa McCarthy and Beverly Wilson weren't available. We're not the only fat actresses. Are you insane? No, I'm just fat and also happy. Why is that so hard for you to understand? <laughs> Time to let fat women be on top. Don't judge until you give it a chance. Nobody gives fat women that chance. <laughs> I am insatiable. For just one time where fat women are represented on screen in a way that shows them as fully formed human beings and not caricatures. I'm confident too. Oh, they can't be two fat girls. Don't be greedy. <laughs> well, our stand-up guest tonight has toured all around the country, and on August 9, he's set to hold an encore performance of his show Good at the City Comedy Store. Please welcome the very funny Tom Cashman. <laughs> How's it going, motherfuckers? <laughs> it's good to be here. I don't, want to, uh, I don't want to talk about men, if that's right. I actually... Uh, I've got a fact about men. I don't know if you know this. Um, it's don't mean to disappoint any men, but uh, the sexual peak for men happens at 17. Johnson Street Leichhardt, that's my house. <laughs> bit of a fact for you. Some men get uh, embarrassed when they're buying condoms at the supermarket. Right? Whereas, personally, I get way more nervous when I'm returning them. <laughs> it's just me. I, uh, talking about men, I reckon there's a big moment in every guy's life, probably every guy watching, every guy in this room. I think uh, when you're about, like, 14, 15, no-one talks about this moment, though. You'll just be walking along in a Kmart or something, just minding your own business, and a little toddler will run around the corner and he'll run into your leg, and his mum came running after him or something. Says, she said something like, Billy, get away from the man. And then they just walked away, and you're left there like, the man? Before I was a boy, now I'm a man. <laughs> no one knows you're having this major rite of passage in aisle seven. You're like, fucking hell. <laughs> I've got to put back these Tarzos. <laughs> I've got to go buy an Esky and nine ties. <laughs> it's all over. Talking about men, though, I reckon uh, there's, there's some creepy men out there, so there's some weird guys. I, uh, I was talking to one particular, uh, particularly weird guy about a year ago. This is the kind of story that sounds fake, but it's true. I was talking to this guy at a, a pub. I didn't know him. He was like a friend of a friend of mine. And after about two minutes of talking to this guy, he, uh, he leaned, uh, an attractive woman walked past and he leaned into me. He's like, oh, oh, oh. you know what I'd want to do to her? Just never a good start. <laughs> it's never something nice. <laughs> no one's ever like, oh, you know what I'd want to do to her? I wouldn't mind paying off her hex debt. <laughs> Wouldn't mind giving her one list of good restaurants around town. <laughs> Wouldn't mind leaving her alone. Hey, <laughs> it's never that. <laughs> sort of something weird, but this is particularly weird because he leans in, he's like, oh, you know what I'm going to do to her. And then he paused for, like, too long, to the point where now I'm sitting there awkward, like I've got to ask a fucking follow-up question or something. So after a while, I'm like, what do you want to do to this poor woman? And then he said this, he's like, wouldn't mind having her as my own personal Tamagotchi. <laughs> I was like, man, I don't think you're familiar with the Tamagotchi device. <laughs> as far as I remember, there are only three settings on those things. Play with it, feed it, and clean up its shit. <laughs> Doesn't sound like a very do good deal for you. It sounds like a better deal for her, if anything. You know, be a very committed butler. <laughs> but I said something like that to him. I'm like, man, I don't think you know about Tamagotchis. But then he said this. He was like, no, 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 no. I've got one. <laughs> and you know what I mean. And it was at that point, for the first time in my life, I was sitting there legitimately thinking, this guy is fucking his Tamagotchi. 
Which is very weird. I'm sure you'll all agree. For two reasons. I was thinking about it. Like, first of all, how does that even work? What's he doing? Just rubbing it on himself or something? Surely his dick doesn't fit in that tiny reset hole. That's one of the smallest holes I've ever seen in my whole life. But weirder than that. Weirder than that to me. It's like, if that was me, if I had a children's toy at my home that I was regularly using to service myself sexually, and then one night I'm, I'm thinking, I'm going to go out. I'm going to go up to the pub. It's a Friday. I'm going to go out and try and meet some normal human people. If that were me that night, I would make a huge effort not to mention the Tamagotchi. <laughs> that would be goal number one for the evening, I reckon. I'd have small talk prepared. I'd have a fake story about tampons ready in case I start saying Tamagotchi and need to veer off <laughs> at the last minute. This fucking guy talking for two minutes, first woman he sees, he's like, you're not on order to her, and then paused. At the time, I thought the pause was for effect. Looking back, I just think he couldn't think of anything non tamagotchi related to say. He's <laughs> got a big wheel of fortune wheel of things to say spinning in his head, but just a Tamagotchi on every segment, like, oh, no. And I've been like, what do you want to do? He's been like, oh, she'd be a Tamagotchi, actually. <laughs> that would be ideal. <laughs> I, uh, I think it's hard being a man, though. Very, very sorry. Um, <laughs> it's definitely not as hard as being a woman, but that just means it's the second hardest and that's still pretty hard. <laughs> that's what I reckon. But I'll, I'll give you one example There's, of it being hard being a man. There's not many, but um, this is one. When women put up a photo of themselves on uh, Facebook or Instagram, immediately her female friends will comment publicly underneath, being like, oh, my God, you're so beautiful. You're the prettiest girl I've ever seen <laughs> in my whole life. Every step you take is a miracle. <laughs> Every breath you breathe is God inside of a Jesus dream. <laughs> Everything you touch is gorgeous. Everything gorgeous reminds me of your touch. <laughs> You're my guiding light. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. These are emojis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's weird. I put up a photo of me. I get private texts from my male friends saying, kill yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's all for me. Thank you very much. Yeah.